museum has a huge impact on the community. From the tourism that it brings in, to the people in our community that look to us as a place for children to grow up and play. We are always looking for programs that can have impacts on children in a variety of ways, from our daily programs that happen on our floor, to our special events and camps, and especially our programs that make kids feel extra special when they come, like our executive director for the day. Executive Director for a Day program is amazing. It's a day I get to take off because we have a new boss, but it's also a great day because kids get a chance to really look at what would they change? What would they want to impact? What things would they want to see? Our Executive Director this year stood out to all of us. Silas's application was about more than just herself. It was about all the kids that have been through something similar to what she had been through. She had told us how she had lost someone close to her, and she wanted the opportunity for other kids in the same situation to be able to come and enjoy a day at the museum. That really touched all of us and made a huge impact because she was thinking about someone other than just herself. When they chose me, I was very excited and happy. I wanted to be the executive director because I got back from Camp Erin and the kids that go to Camp Erin are like kids that have lost someone. The kids at camp got to play here, so they would lose all of the sad times and be happy. We need to create space for kids to play when they're grieving. To create space where they can just be kids is so important. And Silas looking at the Children's Museum as an opportunity to create that space, it was a lovely experience for everyone. I signed a lot of papers and ate lunch and got to play with my friends. Our main goal is to bring children together who are going through similar experiences so that they don't feel so alone in their grief. So our partnership and being able to hold Holiday Hope down at the Lincoln Children's Museum was just uh, such a critical way to be able to reflect what we teach them and for, for Silas to allow us to, to put that in action. We had a, a lot of wonderful experiences at uh, the, the Lincoln Children's Museum. Uh, we we uh, did bring in a local artist and the artist was paired with these bereaved children and they looked at, at different ways to honor and remember the person that died. And one of the beautiful experiences that came out of that was creating grief totem poles. What we find is that a lot of times children don't have the words to express their grief, but they can create it through art. They can express it through music. They can express it through play. So looking at those different mediums to express their grief. Again, that's where this partnership with the Lincoln Children's Museum was, was such a, a vital step because it gave them that space and that opportunity to um, express their grief in a different manner. Well, I was a pastor for 13 years. Uh, I learned the five stages of grief and brought that into my ministry. So when I heard about Morning Hope in Lincoln and its work with children who are grieving, it was just a natural. And so Jeannie and I met with uh, Carly and uh, we're uh, excited about the museum's connection to Morning Hope. Lincoln is not just about the Nebraska football, baseball, or volleyball teams. Lincoln is about children. We as residents of Lincoln need to continue to support all of the efforts that the Children's Museum makes on a daily basis. Well, our son, our adult son, was invited to be a superhero for Superhero Day uh, a couple of years ago. And that was our first time in the museum, and we were very impressed. The whole variety of opportunities for children to learn things. That was our first connection. And then we heard about Hausman Construction, Cuckoo Construction. Two years ago, we lost uh, my dad, who was a World War II veteran and served with the Navy in the South Pacific with their construction battalion, the Seabees. And his entire career was in construction. It seemed a perfect opportunity to be able to memorialize Pop uh, by contributing to the museum for the cuckoo clock. And whenever I'm here and the clock goes off and the bricks fall and the children are just delighted uh, I think of my dad uh, and how much he would be pleased uh, to see them uh, playing and learning about construction. 
Pop would love every single moment of it. The museum strives to be accessible to every child. So programs like Have a Heart, Shining Star, and our partnerships are so important. We partner with Cedars and we offer them a super pass. This is a membership that they're allowed to pass around to all the families, and it gives all the children in foster care a chance to visit the museum at some time throughout the year. Autism Family Network has their annual Christmas party here, and they bring in a sensory-friendly Santa. This gives them the opportunity to make memories that the rest of us take for granted. We partner with the Down Syndrome Association so that they can have an evening that's just for them. They can enjoy a night of togetherness and play. Those are just a few examples. We're always looking for ways in which we can bring as many kids in as possible. Events like Taste of Spring and annual fundraising help us to have programs and partnerships that touch lives, like Silas and so many others. When children visit the museum, they're not just playing, they are learning. And that's what's most important about the Children's Museum.